Today we're turning this piece of framing in our new renovation project into an actual bathroom that is fully watertight. I mean, at least I hope it's watertight. And in case you're new here, we're currently in the process of completely renovating an old apartment in the heart of Oslo. So far, we've basically done a whole bunch of demolition and we've now finally started to build back up. In the last video, we finished all the framing for the entire bathroom. We also finished all the water and plumbing that will live inside of the walls. So now we're finally ready to cover all that up. Now the end goal of this video is to have a fully watertight bathroom. And the thing that's gonna make that happen is this waterproofing membrane board. It's a cement board that basically has a waterproofing layer glued onto it and we'll screw this stuff onto all of the walls in here. But there is actually one step that comes before that and that is attaching these plywood boards to the walls. We do this for two reasons. One, it gives us something to screw into when we want to hang cabinets and other stuff onto the walls later on. And it gives us a nice and solid base to screw these onto. Oh, and by the way, both the plywood, which is really nice, it comes in these strips and has a tongue and groove on both sides, as well as the waterproofing boards are provided by Dury, which is a local hardware company here in Oslo. We'll talk more about the benefits of these once we get to installing them, but for now, Thanks so much guys for sending me all this stuff. All right, first couple of walls. This should go super quick, especially with these tongue and groove boards. Slide it in place and then. And now for these next ones, I'll just measure, cut the size and attach them all the way up. Now for some of these places, like the frame for the side of the shower, I've already tried to plan a little bit ahead and make the framing so that these fit flush on the inside so that when we go to attach the waterproofing boards at the end, yeah, they should hopefully sit nice and flush. And now we just do the same thing to the rest of the walls. It's just crazy how quickly this transformed just a framework into an actual room. I mean, I don't really love the look of this right now. It really reminds me of a sauna, but as a skeleton and a framework to attach stuff to, this is awesome. Now moving on to the side of the shower here, we've got a bunch of stuff that we need to work around, both the box for the controls for the shower, the outlet for the showers, and we've got a couple of niches. I've already cut a bunch of boards to size, so let's just attach these work our way around this, and then I'll show you a cool trick to work around all these holes after we've done that. And these plywood boards with the tongue and groove all the way around, awesome to work with. If <laughs> they're not trying to kill you. Almost done with the sheeting on the wall. Quick interruption by Paul. He's coming to move a bit of the piping. Not because there was anything wrong, but because I'm annoying and I had some idea to get it a bit lower and behind the washing machine. So he's doing a great job and helping us out there. Back already. <laughs> I'm gonna get wet. All the plumbing is done. Again, we're almost done with all the wood paneling. But before we get to finish that, there's something that I'd almost forgotten about. You might remember from one of the previous episodes that I filled the hole that used to be in the wall here for the ventilator. That means that we now need to put a new hole on this wall to make this pipe fit in there. So that's what I got the fun job of doing right now. Well, that was weird and did not take much time at all because there's literally just a brick missing here. So I guess I sort of got lucky with just where I decided to drill that hole, but I guess last time they did some modifications to that wall, they just didn't bother to put that brick back in. But my solution for this is pretty simple. I've shaped the brick to fit in here. And then we've got this pipe that will go next to it. And I'll just mix up some more of that extra strong repair motor that we used for everything else. Get plenty of that stuff in there, fill in all the gaps, and we should be good to go. And just like that, 
all the surfaces that need to be covered are covered in plywood. I've got all the walls done. I've even got all the little surfaces on the inside here. And we've got the hole for the ventilation done. Now, some of you might have noticed that I've completely covered these three shelves that used to be on the wall here. But to get those back, got a little trick. I'll first drill a couple of holes. And now I'll use a trim router, insert that into the hole, and then trace around all the three pockets. This is the same tool I used to cut out the door opening where I'd left a full board at the top and the bottom of the door. All the holes are cut out and we're finally at the point where we can start waterproofing this thing. The product I'm using is called Aqua Pro Light. These are developed and provided to me by the same company that makes these fiber boards, which is called Dure. This side of the board is completely waterproof. So this is what's going to become our membrane for the entire bathroom. I've already laid out a couple of these on the back wall of the shower. So now we're marked out where I need to make the cut. And I mean, full disclosure, I've never worked with these boards before, but I think I should be able to just use a knife, score it like you would a sheet of drywall, and then I think you should be able to... Woo! There we go. That worked out not too bad, and the cut is actually pretty clean. So now we've got these strips that are perfectly flat and level, and we're gonna use some tile adhesive to glue the waterproofing boards directly onto the wall. All right, tile adhesive on the wall. Next step is to make sure that they actually stay where they're supposed to be and are completely flat against the wall. And since I can't screw into this wall, I'll use some of these expansion plugs. I'll just drill a hole matching this one and then hammer in a bunch of these. Now yes, installing these onto the concrete wall was a bit of work, but let me show you how quick and easy it's gonna be to attach these to the plywood walls. First step, we'll use a bit of this adhesive and run one bead down the center of the board. And that should be enough because these boards are relatively stiff. And when we now go to screw on each side of them with some regular drywall screws, with the screws spaced about 20 centimeters apart, this thing is securely attached to the wall. And for the next one, we've got a few obstacles in the water outlets and drain. I've already marked out the locations on the board. We'll use a hole saw to cut the first hole. The second hole is only partially on there, which we'll cut with the jigsaw. And now hope that it fits. I think we've got that pretty well figured out. Now the only thing left is the rest. And one by one, slowly but surely, we're covering all the surfaces in the entire bathroom. We now covered everything up to this point. So essentially, it's just the hard stuff left. Well, I mean, none of this stuff is actually super hard. It's just a bit more tedious and making small bits and pieces fit. Like we had to do in here where there's a recess for the water outlet and the drain for the washing machine. It's really just a bit more measuring and a couple of small pieces that need to be glued on. But piece by piece, eventually this bathroom will be watertight. The next step is to put waterproofing boards on the inside of these niches. And yes, that is gonna be a fair bit of work because we've got not one, not two, but three, four, five, individual compartments that we need to cut out parts for. Now I've actually already done that and yes, that is a fair bit of parts. But now that I've had the chance to work with this material a bit and I'm a bit more comfortable with it, it's actually pretty quick work. I've discovered if you want really clean and nice edges, it's a great idea to use a jigsaw cut from the rough side. That way the side with the membrane on it will get a super nice and clean cut. If I've done it right, all of these parts should fit. So I'll just add a little bit of glue, insert the boards. And once all these glue sets, all this will be plenty held in place. Maybe I'll add some screws just to be safe. All right, now we just repeat that process for the remaining four. And now with all the parts for all the niches glued and screwed in place, it's time to start on the fun stuff. Or well, at least uh, a little bit more challenging stuff. Starting off with this thing, which is the board that's gonna go over this toilet area with all of its clouds for the push buttons, drains, and the hangers. Now, luckily, I was able to cheat a little bit because the frame of this toilet 
came with a template that I could use to cut out all these points. The way this toilet will actually end up being perfectly waterproof together with the wall system is that the entire canister is inside of this plastic bag. I'm gonna be now go to place this board in front of here, grab the lip of the bag and pull it out. And then this will get glued and sealed off with the rest of the membrane, making sure that if there's a leak, all the leaky water will come out of the bottom of the bag, which also goes through a hole and will end up leaking just inside the toilet. This fits pretty well, so we'll just screw it on and then work our way through the rest of this bathroom. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, I figured out that regular drywall shaping tools were great to sort of fine tune the shapes and sizes. <laughs> we've covered all the walls, all the surfaces, including all of these niches. Now we've only got one surface left before we can start covering up all the joints and making it actually waterproof. And that surface, yup, is the floor. I've already covered the entire floor with a layer of these fiber cement boards. These things are six millimeters thick and act as a barrier between the flammable wood and the hot heating cables, which we're gonna lay on top of these. These things are super hard and basically impossible to cut. I found what works best is a really sharp blade, make a couple of score lines and break them off. And they don't always break where you want them to break. Regardless, I've covered the entire surface. So now the next step are the heating cables. And I just want to say a huge thanks to Volume Comfort, which is providing us with the heating cables as well as the heating mats for the entire apartment because we're actually gonna have floor heating in every single room and I'm really looking forward to that. Now the first room, which obviously is the bathroom, is probably gonna be the hardest because the heating for this room comes in a cable. So I have to somehow figure out how to evenly glue this cable onto the floor so that all the heating is evenly distributed. And there is actually a formula for this, which is divide the area that you wanna cover by the length of the cable, which will give you the center distance that you need to lay the cable out. Now I've done all that and I might've gone a little overboard, but on the floor here, I marked out where I want all the cables to go. So now the only thing left is hoping I did this right and that I'm not left with either way too much cable at the end or not enough. And installing it should be pretty straightforward. I'll just use a hot melt glue gun and just hot glue it in place, I guess. I mean, so far so good. This is going really well. It's super easy to lay down. And yet, it probably also helps that I have a really fancy glue gun. This thing is about $600, which yeah, is insane. And nope, I definitely did not pay $600 for this. I think I paid around 20, I picked it up online used. Some guy was selling it as big hot melt glue gun. You gotta have a bit of luck sometimes. All right, let's finish this thing. Man, we were so close. I really was only about 45 centimeters too long. So in the end, when I realized, I figured I had to cheat a little bit. So I added in a bit of extra at the back there and spaced these out a bit further apart so that I could run another run up here. My electrician friend is coming over in just a bit to both double check that I've done it right, to measure the resistance in the cable so that I didn't damage it and to document it because he's actually the licensed electrician that is gonna help me out with all the electrical in this entire apartment. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing tool that helps you learn concepts in STEM interactively. Because did you know that learning interactively has been shown to be up to six times more effective than watching lecture videos? Take for example, their newest course, Everyday Math, which provides a great new perspective on foundational math topics like percentages, fractions, and basic geometry taught you in a fun and interactive way. You can learn at your own pace and decide for yourself how quickly you want to progress through their classes. Learn on the go and learn something new. Brilliant works on both desktop and mobile. They've got courses for all ages and all skill levels. So you can start with the fundamentals or dive right into the intermediate and advanced courses for professionals. And you can get started with all of that for free right now. Head to brilliant.org slash A-L-C-H or click the link in my description below. But you better be quick because the first 200 of you that sign up using my link below will get 20% off Brilliant's premium annual subscription. Well guys, I could not be happier right now. The electrician just left and everything was done correctly. He checked all the connections, the resistance, everything. Everything is good to go and ready to have a floor cast on top of it. 
Now in preparation for this, I've already applied some primer to the entire floor. That is so that the casting material has a proper surface to stick to. I've also added this strip of foam all the way around the edge so that the casting has a little bit of room to move around it. I've also gone ahead and added in the casting template that came with our shower drain system. The way this is gonna work is that we're gonna cast the entire floor in two different sections. The first section being the shower, the second section being everything else. Now in the shower, the floor will have to pitch slightly down towards the drain. And by code here in Norway, that pitch needs to be at least one to 50. Meaning for every 50 centimeter away from the drain, you need to have one centimeter height difference from the top of the casting to the bottom of the drain. And then when we go to cast the rest of the floor, that pitch is one to 100. 100 centimeters, one centimeter height difference. The important part is that the entire floor is angled down towards the drain. Now the question is, how do we make sure that that pitch is correct? And for that, I've got these little cool things. You stick these onto the floor and figure out how high the floor needs to be at that specific point. Take a pair of snips, Cut that off. And then when you go to cast the floor, you just make sure that the top of the concrete ends up on all the tops of these. I've added in all the height gauges and double checked that they're actually at the right height. I've also sealed off this area with some bloom foam so that when we go to cast this first section, it doesn't flow out into the other section. All that means that we're now finally ready to start casting our floor. The cement mix that I'm gonna be using is fiber reinforced. That's also why I don't have to use any wire mesh. I'll just mix a bunch of this up, pour it in there, and then level it out up to the tops of those leveling pits. Ugh. Well, you know what? That was pretty hard. What I quickly discovered is that this stuff really wants to be level. After all, it's leveling compound. So I think I mixed it up a little bit too runny so that when I went to push it around and sort of build that angle towards the drain, it just wanted to level itself back out again. So I had to work with it for quite a while until it finally started to set up a little bit, at which point it set up really quick and the finish got kind of uneven. I did try to fix it with a second layer to even out the bumps. I might need to quickly hit this with a grinder tomorrow to even out the minor bumps, but we'll deal with that once we get there. Now onto the rest of this floor. And in preparation for that, I've already gone ahead and removed that blue foam strip as well as the wood that I glued on top. I've also applied a new coat of primer just to the edge to make sure that everything sticks properly. And I've glued on a new strip of wood. This strip is now gonna act as our new barrier. And this is also what's gonna allow us to get a little bit of a ledge because I want the shower to sit slightly lower than the rest of the floor. And just like with the shower, I've added in a bunch of these leveling pins. So right now, all there's left to do, mix up a bunch of all that stuff and cast the floor. I think this side is gonna be a bit easier because the pitch isn't as steep and I'm also gonna mix them a little bit more viscous. Good thing the buckets I'm using are plenty big enough. <laughs> You know what this means? The floor's right. It's actually a couple of days later. I'm really happy with the way this floor turned out. Everything is super smooth and even, and we're now ready to start waterproofing everything. And to help me with that, Poplake from Firma Big just came by to make sure that the waterproofing system in between the seams is applied correctly. So let me show you how all this works. So the first step is that we mixed up a bunch of this goop. This is the glue for the waterproofing membrane. These boards, just like drywall, have a little recess on the ends where we screw them onto the wall. And in that section, we're now applying a bunch of this glue. Next up, we've got this strip of membrane. Now, essentially, this is the same stuff that's already glued onto these boards. So this, just like the paper for drywall, will just squish in to the glue. And then we'll use a putty knife to make sure that everything is properly attached and squeeze out any of the excess glue behind here. And that's basically it. Make sure it's stuck down properly everywhere and that there's glue covering the entire backside of the strip. And both the inside and outside corners are the same exact thing. Apply plenty of this goop and then just stick on this membrane strip on the outside and squish it on evenly. And then the next step is to do the horizontal and vertical strips as well as the inside and outside edges. This is 
going really well so far. After one day of work, we now covered basically all the horizontal and vertical strips. I found it the easiest to cut up a bunch of these strips to the right length ahead of time because this is kind of a messy process and that really just saves you from having to fumble around with a pair of scissors or a knife with your hands full of glue. So all the major edges are covered as well as all the edges on the inside of these niches. And I've also sealed off the box that holds all the water for the shower system. Now you can probably see that there's a bunch of random blue pieces stuck everywhere in the room here. These are the corner pieces that I've just placed out ahead of time. These things are actually pretty cool. They come in an inside corner version like this one and in an outside corner version like that one. And naturally they go on the inside and outside corners. So now that all the side and top edges are covered, these go on next. And here's another reason why to lay these out ahead of time. Some of these I have to adjust a little bit to make them fit with the tight corners in the niches here. I mean, installed all the inside and outside corners and all the nooks and crannies in this entire bathroom, both in here and all the niches, as well as down in this little recess that has the connections for the washing machine. Now, this part was definitely quite time consuming, but I'm super happy with the way they turned out. After installing all the inside and outside corners, I then installed the straight strips in all the bottom edges. That's the same way that we're later gonna go about waterproofing the floor. And in addition to waterproofing all the corners, I've also waterproofed all the connections that come out of the walls. I've done that with these things. These things are sort of elastic gaskets that get glued into the membrane the same way as everything else. I've installed them for the water in the sink, as well as the same type of outlet for the shower and the small tubes that I previously installed that are gonna house the LED strips these come out of the top corners. And then finally, the last thing that needed to be waterproof was the toilet system. So if the water in the tank ever leaks, it will just leak out into the toilet itself. Pretty cool, huh? Now next up, we'll have to do the same thing to the floor. But as you might remember, the floor in the shower turned out kind of wonky and the floor is definitely not even. Now luckily, my buddy Anders lent me this cool thing which is for grinding concrete. So we're gonna use this to remove all the high spots from the floor. And then if there's any low spots or unevennesses left, we just mix up some fill material and fill those in to make the floor nice and smooth. We're now ready to start applying the waterproofing membrane in the edges between the walls and the floor. And there were also a couple of areas in the floor over here that I did the same exact thing to. I've also gone over and sanded off any sharp edges anywhere on the floor, especially here in the shower pan area, but also any other rough transitions or sharp edges that could damage the membrane. And I also had to grind off all the bits and glue that had spilled when applying the membrane to the walls. So here's a quick tip cover off the floor right away. That way you don't have to do all that work. For the floor, I'm gonna start with all the corners and then I'm gonna move on to all the edges. And I already pre-cut all the strips, so this should be nice and easy. Oh, and I've also primed the concrete to make sure that this stuff sticks to it. It's now time to install the drain sealing collar, which is this rubbery mat that's super flexible and sticky. We'll add this to the entire drain surface area and this is gonna add another layer of protection before we put the membrane on top. And now the next step is to waterproof the floor. The way that's gonna work is with this sheet of waterproofing membrane. So this membrane comes in a roll and is basically the same exact thing that is already glued on the outside of these waterproofing boards. It's also the same material as the small strips that I'm sealing all the joints with. Now the benefit with this over let's say a liquid membrane that you have to roll on in a couple of layers is that with this system, you're absolutely sure that you've got perfect cover everywhere as opposed to rolling system, where you're not really sure if you've rolled on and off everywhere in the back. And again, I've already pre-cut all the bits to cover an entire floor ahead of time. So now we'll just roll out some glue and then stick these down. Oh, and I've also double and triple checked and vacuumed the floor for any dust and debris and sharp bits that could puncture your membrane. Thank you. 
now actually a couple of days later, everything has had plenty of time to properly dry. Patrick from Fjellamabig was just here to check over my work. He said it looked good, but really there's only one way to properly check if this thing is watertight. This thing is where the hand shower is supposed to connect. I think if I open this thing, ah, <laughs> and remove the plug that was in there, <laughs> I think I can. Ah! <laughs> Fill up the bathroom with water! Because it turns out if you take the water lock in the drain and flip it upside down and put it back in, it acts as a plug, so now we can fill up the entire bathroom with water. But we're actually not doing this just for fun. When Patrick was here, he measured the relative humidity in the material with this fancy measuring device. So the plan is fill this room with water, wait 12 hours, drain everything back out, measure again. If the values are more or less the same, we did a good job. If they're not, we've got a problem. It's a bit over 12 hours later, there's still water in here, which I think is a good sign. It's time to empty this thing out. Wow, that drains fast. Yes, success! This thing is fully watertight. After letting everything dry out just a little bit so the water can evaporate from the surface, we checked it again and everything checks out. This thing is super sensitive, so basically anything below 999 means that there's no moisture below the surface. So. Everything is a success. And with that, that's it for this video. We've gone from framework to fully watertight bathroom, ready to have tiles and micro cement put on the floor and walls. That is exactly what we're gonna do in the next video. So make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I upload something new. If you enjoyed this video and want to support what I do, how about go checking out my website, which is alch.shop. On there, I have all sorts of cool stuff, everything from built plans to 3D files. How about, for instance, this case made completely out of wood and 3D printed parts with an organizer system made out of 3D printed boxes inside. And the cool part is, you can flip it upside down and everything stays right where it's supposed to. That's alch.shop. That's for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.